Now, for more on the donor backlash, the implications for higher ed, what happened at UPenn and what university leaders should be doing to address anti-Semitism concerns, let's now bring in Naomi Schaefer-Riley, the senior fellow at the American Enterprise Institute. Now, she previously covered higher education for both the Wall Street Journal and the New York Post. Naomi, thank you very much for joining us. I guess the first question overall is just how important should these campaigns be for the combating of anti-Semitism at institutions of higher learning? Sure, thanks for having me. Um, well, money talks, as you're beginning to see finally. Um, my, my question for a lot of these donors is where have they been for the last 10 or 20 years as anti-Semitism has increased on campuses across the United States? But I think this is hugely important. I think that college presidents uh, really do have to care about their bottom line, even at very wealthy universities. If you have hedge fund managers who are encouraging people to withhold hundreds of millions of dollars in donations in response to what is just pure cowardice on the part of these administrators, um, I think that's a great move. I think they'll finally start listening to the concerns of people in the community who have for decades felt as if uh, this is a problem that is growing and it is not being addressed by the administrations. Naomi, there's a very fine line that a lot of folks are trying to walk right here. It's not about the outrage, not outrage. There are outrageous things happening around the world. The question then becomes about the free speech element. The takes that I have heard are that you don't want to stifle free speech and it's something that we as journalists treasure very much. We're all very big First Amendment proponents. But that you also have to say with your free speech that these are despicable views or these are despicable acts that are happening. How exactly then do institutions at higher ed make that balance or toe that line? Well, I don't think it's as hard a line to draw as you're suggesting. I would refer people to, for instance, uh, Ben Sass, who is the president of University of Florida, gave a very clear statement where he said, we have free speech here. You want to demonstrate that's fine. The second it descends into any kind of threats or violence or anything like that, um, we will respond. And also, we will protect the security of the Jews on campus. And also, by the way, we unconditionally condemn the attack on, on Israeli citizens. Um, to say, you know, we are opposed to the decapitation of babies doesn't really seem to me like it's a very controversial thing to say, but apparently these days on campus it is. Um, I will also point out that I think it's, it's in terms of free speech, th this line had been crossed a long time ago. I mean, there was a report, there are some interesting reports, you know, tw back in 2011, you had this eruption of anti-Semitic statements, you could call them that, at UC Irvine. You had people chanting death to the Jews. Uh, you had people vandalizing Holocaust memorials. You had people threatening individual Jewish students. So the idea that this is now just about free speech, I, I just I don't buy it. I think that campuses have a duty to protect free speech, but they also have a duty to ensure that it's clear where that line is and, and that students cannot engage in this kind of threatening tone, and also that those students are not speaking for the university. I mean, it is it is incredible to me. Just take Penn, for instance. Um, they were only too happy to speak out about the death of George Floyd. Once you go down this road of making political statements as a university administration, then it seems to me perfectly reasonable to expect that they're going to say something about the slaughter of over a thousand Jews in Israel.